Hello everybody, uh, my name's Eric. And I just thought I'd share with you a little bit of how I go about creating a good oil painting. And I start off with not even knowing what I want to do, and that's been a problem for, with me for a long, long time. Is that I don't know what to paint. And I sell a painting and then it's gone. And then I've got to reinvent myself all over again. And I realized like one day I don't need to reinvent every time. I can work with a thread. Scenes that I've liked in the past, like I walk past something, go for a walk, well, I need to paint that. And I need to understand why I need to paint that. Because it's caught my eye. My emotions are excited, yes, I want to paint that. So I look at it, and I don't know why I want to paint it. So, I realized that I need to go back to that scene over and over. And make lots of little... I'm actually quite a lazy painter, so... I just wanted to get to the final scene right from the beginning. Sell the painting, and move on, and not... I don't understand why people do these little preliminary drawings and little sketches and all that, you know. So, I realize now that you actually have to grow something in your mind, grow it in your heart. Subconsciously, you'll look at the scene and go, oh, I need, I need, to, get, I need to paint that, that's beautiful. So you immediately, like, get drawn to something. But now, you don't even know how to go about it. You don't even know how to, you're maybe not even good enough to capture that scene. So my way to get to the place where I'm good enough to actually do that scene justice is to do a lot of little paintings. And, uh, I'm, a, I'm trying to be a plein air painter. I've only been doing this for about uh, two years now. A lot of influence on YouTube and that has been wonderful. I've grown a lot watching other people on YouTube. And, and your encouragement out there, painting your scenes out there has made me very... Um, it's helped me. Because I've, I haven't studied in university, I haven't studied anywhere. But just learning of what other people see about life and atmospheric perspective and all that has helped me tremendously and I've watched a lot of you guys doing little studies little small studies on uh, canvas and I've and I just thought nah I'm just gonna paint a big one you know but I've realized now that uh, you need to do little studies to to grow, as this is the university of life, right here, this is what you see, right here is what you actually will learn so much from. So, I created this little box, it's not an original idea, I think lots of people have invented this. For me, just to hang it around my neck, it's so nice, because I don't feel like, when I'm painting, uh, that I feel vulnerable when I'm sitting on the ground and I've got the public walking around me and they're looking at me or people approaching me and asking me questions. If I'm standing, I'm used to standing painting. So I stand a lot and I actually my legs cramp up when I sit and I don't feel like I'm in the creative process when I'm sitting. So when I walk around busy towns and that and I've just got this thing around my neck, it's so cool, you know, like I, can just, I feel more confident and secure with it with me standing and I don't have to walk around with a tripod and extra baggage all I got is these little, these little uh, I think they're like 8 by 8 inches I don't know they're really small you know, I don't know if you can see them and these are just little color studies that when I walk past a painting and I go or a scene in nature because I've decided now I'm not working from photos anymore I'll use photos as a perspective uh, guide. So I'll take a photo of my scene, but I'll use it to see how the lens uses perspective 
So I'll use it for that. But since I've been working from plain air, it's like a veil has been lifted from my eyes. There's so much more colour. There's no black. There's no blown out white. And where there is white, it's so minimal. Pure white, I'm talking. It's just colour. It's wherever I see colour. Cool and warm. So it's helped me a lot, you know. And uh, to take these little studies into my studio and then paint from them, it's been a huge eye opener for me. Because I'm actually starting to think more like an artist than what a limit the limitations of photos have done to me. So it's helped me a lot. See the so this particular scene here I've painted numerous times. Um and it's attracted me over and over and there's this there's a real sense of beauty in this place. I keep it clean because it's, to me it's like my Monet garden. Monet had his garden and I've got mine. This is my garden. This is just down the road from where I live in a small town. So it's quite secluded but with the surrounding people that live here who don't really care about this place. They dump their garbage here, they mess, they chop trees down. The appreciation for this place isn't there. Uh, so I've, I've taken it upon myself to just keep it clean, keep it tidy, and take advantage of it. It's like paying my country club fee fees, you know. I come here with my dogs, bring my child here. It's just beautiful. And I see the beauty of it. And I constantly come here to paint and to grow where there's not that much interference from people while I'm trying to paint because then I can I don't have to explain myself I don't have to entertain people I can just be myself me and and the life and reality and here I'm learning it's, it's a little playground for me to to grow and if something grabs me like this scene it keeps grabbing me I, I'm always Looking at the shadow here of the tree and the, the aerial perspective and what it's doing in the mist and the water. And every time I come here, I just want to paint it. And I must have painted this scene about nine or eight times already. Um, and my first attempts were nowhere near what I felt. Because I don't think I was good enough to actually give this scene justice. So I keep coming back to it, time and come again. And I've made big ones, I've made small ones. I've sold some. Um, because they've been, they've been good, you know, they've been nice and they've appealed to the buyer. But they've never done me justice. I've never thought that I could do this scene justice. Uh, so I will constantly paint this scene because it still inspires me. And I've never ever met the mark where visually and emotionally it's met with the first time I saw it and said wow I want to paint that so I've had to grow my visual um, understanding of it I've had to grow my my heart my sense of of expectation as to where where this thing actually is and what what is it what is appealing to me what is causing me to want to paint it and as I've grown in my um, ability to paint that scene and including working with what I hear on YouTube about aerial perspective, mixing colors, I mean everybody online is so helpful and it's, it's like amazing to actually think that you can look in YouTube and people are freely giving valuable information out there and when you connect the dots, when you hear a little bit from this guy and a little bit from there and you hear it and you watch someone else just going out and painting it's hugely inspirational to me because I'm so isolated here in Maltino that I find that I don't have any input as an artist so I'm very alone as an artist because I'm surrounded with farmers I'm surrounded with country club golfers and people who don't really relate, relate to me as an artist but it doesn't matter because people do get caught up 
in my paintings when they see my work and then they start gaining an appreciation for the environment by looking at my paintings so that's really helped me a lot so I just want to say thank you to all the YouTube people um, online that share their bit and even if it's the most insignificant video not even the most slick one I'll watch it because I find I learn from every one of you out there who are just sharing their blogs who are just gaining some kind of understanding themselves it's good for us to all share and talk because it helps all of us to grow as artists and as painters because painting will never die painting is something that humans do it's greater than any machine any camera any technology that can ever be created because at the end of the day when a human takes paint and processes it through their mind and makes an image that's still a human thing and it can be it, it beats anything it's like an amazing thing it's magic so don't ever lose that passion thanks thanks very much for for watching